Hello, I'm Will Babcock with the Elkhart Model Railroad Club. If you are a regular viewer of Jim's Friday Night Running at the Club videos, you may have noticed that a British train makes an appearance from time to time. Those British trains belong to me. And after three years of collecting British trains and three years of the club members seeing them run on their layout, the club has asked me to do a clinic on some of my British models. So you're probably wondering why an American like me would start collecting British model trains. The biggest reason was because I was personally disappointed with a lot of the models, uh, a lot of the steam locomotive models uh, being offered by American manufacturers. They have proprietary decoders. They usually have proprietary decoders that are, I found to be unreliable. And they were also very expensive. British trains uh, are usually DCC ready, which means I can put whatever decoder I want in them. And they're much cheaper than American models. Additionally, I found there to be mu a much greater variety of locomotives available on the British market versus the American market. And here in the US, it seems like every manufacturer covers the same five prototypes. And over, and over in the UK, that's not the case. Uh, all, there's four major railway companies over there. And it seems like all four of them are covered very well. So if I ever wanted to model something accurately, it'd be much easier to do that with a UK prototype in the steam era than a US prototype. And the final reason is because I, f I re really started liking them, especially once I started collecting. I think they, they really knew how to make a very attractive steam engine. And so as you might have figured out with the eight locomotives sitting out here today that my main interest is in steam locomotives. Uh, my interest with British Railways stops in 1968 when the last mainline steam locomotive ran. Uh, so I don't actually own any diesel, so all my models um, that I'm going to be showing today are steam locomotives. Um, I've selected a wide variety of steam locomotives from a variety of different railroads and eras. This should give everybody a sort of perspective on how steam locomotive design in the UK evolved. So all of these models are what we call double O or 176 scale, but they run on HO scale track. This is because in the 1930s when uh, HO scale, scale started to become a thing over there in the UK, they couldn't uh, fit, the manufacturers of the day could not fit their mechanisms into HO scale models of the prototypes. This is because that in real life, UK steam locomotives are much smaller than steam locomotives in the rest of the world. Before I talk about my models, I wanna go over just a brief history of British rail. Uh, this will cover basically the start of the railways in the 1830s to uh, the end of steam in the 19, 1960s. So the UK opened the first modern railway in 1830 called the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. And from that point on, a bunch of similar railways sprung up. And by 1850, the country had a national network with most villages and towns having a railway connection. All these railways, comp all these railway companies are called pre-grouping railways. During World War I, all these railways, all these railway companies came under government control, and then following, and then following the war on January first, nineteen twenty-three, all these smaller railway companies were amalgamated into four big railway companies. These, these four railways were the Mid, uh, London, Midland, and Scottish Railway, called the LMS, the London and North Eastern Railway, called the LNER. The Great Western Railway, which we refer to as the GWR, and the Southern Railway. These railways would gain all of the rolling stock from their predecessors. All four of these companies lasted until World War II, when on January 1st, 1948, the railways were nationalized due to their poor condition after the war. When the railways were nationalized, just like before, the different regions of BR that's what it, that's what the nationalized network was called British Rail, which we refer to as BR. They gained just like before. They gained all of the rolling stock of their predecessor railways. B 
DR divided their network up into six regions. These regions were the Southern, which was all, all former Southern railway lines, the Western, which was all the Great Western railway lines, the London and Midland region was all LMS lines that weren't in Scotland, the Eastern was all London and Northeastern railway lines south of York, the Northeastern was all LNER lines north of York, but not in Scotland, and the Scottish region was all the lines in Scotland. Because each region retained the rolling stock of their predecessor railway, many of these regions still retain the identity of their predecessor region, except all of the locomotives and rolling stock were in different paint jobs. BR would continue to use steam locomotives until August 11, 1968, when the final passenger train special was run. One day later, steam engines were banned from the UK's main lines. I'll be covering eight models today. Um, these, all four of these models are made by Bachman and Hornby. Uh, there are other manufacturers of steam locomotives, but it just so happened that the Eight I wanted to use today were made by those two manufacturers. They are the two biggest manufacturers. So let's get started talking about some of my locomotives. The oldest prototype I have represented in my collection is this, a London Bright, London, a London Bright and a South Coast Railway Terrier. They were designed and built by William Stroudley for suburban passenger trains around London. And these diminutive take engines quickly gained a reputation for their reliability. They were so reliable that when they became, un became unsuited for the passenger trains because the passenger trains were too heavy, they were transferred to branch lines and shunting duties. Starting in 1911, 17 examples had their boilers replaced with a new design along with some other changes and were classified A1X. After the grouping of 1923, these locomotives became a part of the Southern Railway where they would continue as shunters and branch line locomotives. Amazingly, these locomotives will last in commercial service until 1963, when the last four examples would be withdrawn from the Hailing Island branch line by BR Southern Region. At the time of the withdrawal, these locomotives, which were built between 1872 and 1880, would be the oldest locomotives running on BR's network. They were popular among us enthusiasts, so 10 were saved from scrap and continued to run trains on heritage lines. The model I have is produced by Hornby and represents one of the two terriers purchased by the London and Southwestern Railway for use on the Lyme Regis branch line in 1901. The, this model represents the locomotive when it was in A1 condition around the turn of the century. We now move from the very south of England to Scotland with our next locomotive. This is a Caledonian Railway 812 class 060 designed by John F. McIntosh for mixed traffic work, these locomotives borrowed heavily from the previous Caledonian railway designs. Starting in 1899, the first batch of 17 were produced. These first 17 locomotives were notable for having a Westinghouse train brake system for, and steam heating bike pipes, making them suitable for passenger service. As, they, as such, they were painted into the striking Caledonian railway lined blue passenger livery. The rest of these locomotives that were built were used for freight service and were painted black. Upon the 1923 grouping, these locomotives were transferred to LMS ownership where they continued to work goods trains in Scotland. All but three survived until nationalization in 1948 and would continue in service until 1963. One locomotive was selected in pres for preservation, locomotive number 828, and is one of only three surviving Caledonia Railway locomotives. The model I have is produced by Bachman, was produced by Bachman exclusively for the retail rails of Sheffield. It represents locomotive number 828, one of the original 17 to be used for passenger service in its current preserved condition. Moving on to just before the grouping of 1923, we have the arguably the most famous British steam locomotive design, the LNER, the Great Northern Railway Class A1. Designed by Nigel Gresley for the Great Northern Railway, they were designed to replace the aging Atlantics that were used on the railway's top express trains. However, they didn't last very long on the Great Northern. Less than a year after the first of the class was built, 
they were amalgamated into the LNER in the 1923 group. Yeah, Nigel Gresley, who was appointed chief mechanical engineer of the LNER, would make this locomotive the standard express locomotive of the LNER. After exchange trials with the Great Western Railway, where, four, where locomotive number 4472 Flying Scotsman was pitted against Castle Class 4079 Pendennis Castle from the Great Western, numerous shortcomings were found with the design. Starting in 1926, Gresley began modifying his design. Modifications included changes to the valve gear and new 220 PSI boilers. The first locomotive to be built with these modifications was number 2743 Felstead, appearing in 1928, and was classified as an A3. Eventually, all A1s were rebuilt into A3s, and these rebuilt locomotives were said to be very successful. These locomotives would live past nationalization of the railways in 1948 and continue in service until 1959, where the, when the first locomotives were withdrawn from service. All locomotives would be withdrawn by 1966 with one survivor. That survivor would be locomotive number 4472 Flying Scotsman. The model I have is repre represents locomotive number 2564 Night of the Thistle in A1 condition between the years of 1924 and 1932. The next locomotive we are going, we are looking at is another famous British British design, this time from the Great Western. In 1924, Charles Collett of the GWR was looking for a new mixed tra traffic locomotive to replace older locomotives. To achieve this, he took a St. Class 460 and rebuilt it with smaller driving wheels. And then after three years of testing, the Hall class emerged and 258 examples would be built. The design would pr prove to be an excellent performer, able to do pretty much anything asked of it, whether it be goods or passenger service. The design would be further developed into the Grange and Manor class, both of which would be smaller and lighter designs that could run on more than outwork. And then finally into the 6956 class called the Modified Hall class. 71 modified halls would be produced. The halls would be so successful that they inspired that they would inspire the London Midland Scottish Railway and the LNER to make similar locomotives, these being the LMS's Black 5 460s and the LNER's B1 460s. Both of these designs, particularly particularly the Black 5, would would be extremely successful. These locomotives would last well past nationalization in 1948, and we continue to work until what they began to be withdrawn in 1959. Withdrawal would be complete by the end of 1965, with 17 hall classes preserved, 11 standard halls, and six modified halls. The model, this model is manufactured by Hornby and represents the first ground up member of the class, number 4901, named Adderley Hall as it appeared in the late 1920s and early 1930s. Next model I will be showing is another classic express locomotive. In 1932, the, new, the newly appointed chief mechanical engineer of the LMS, William Stanier, needed to modernize the LMS's aging fleet of locomotives, particularly ones that were meant to haul heavy express trains between London and Scotland. Formerly an engineer of the Great Western Railway, Stanier based his new, his new locomotive on the Jeep Great Western Railway's four-cylinder King Class 460. Instead of a 460, Stanier would opt for a 462 wheel arrangement, and two would be built in 1933. The pair would quickly prove to the LMS management that the Princess Royals, as they had been dubbed, could slash journey times between London and Glasgow in Scotland. In 1935, a further ten were built along with the unique turbo motive, a turbine-powered locomotive based on the same chassis as the Princesses. All members, including the turbo motive, survived nationalization in 1948. Then, in 1949, the turbo motive suffered a turbine failure, causing BR to rebuild it into something resembling a standard Princess Royal. However, only eight weeks after the rebuild was completed, on October 8, 1952, it would be the first of the class to be withdrawn after being destroyed in an accident. 
The rest would be withdrawn between 1961 and 1962 with two surviving into preservation. This model represents locomotive number 6203, Princess Margaret Rose. 6203 was built in 1935 and was withdrawn from service in 1962. It was purchased it was then purchased by Billy Butlin for his dis for display at his vacation camps, along with several other LMS engines. He would eventually sell the locomotive into preservation in 1975. 6203 is currently waiting overhaul. The next model we'll be looking at is quite special to me, as it was the first British locomotive I purchased. The design is an LMS class 2MT260. These locomotives were designed by George Ivatt and were a tender engine variant of its 2MT262 tank engine design. Designed to replace aging 060s, some of which dated back to the 1880s, they would be used on cross-country services and branch lines. They wouldn't last long on the LMS as they were built in 1946 and were transferred to the London Midland region of BR in the 1948 nationalization of the railway network. BR liked the design and would continue to build it until 1953. They would also clone the design, and with a few modifications, the design would become the BR Standard Class 2MT260. The additional examples built by BR were assigned to all regions except the Southern region. The engines would last in service until 1961, when the first examples were withdrawn. The, cl the class would be completely taken out of service by 1967. Seven locomotives were preserved, with six of the seven having run in preservation. The seventh is currently undergoing restoration. The model ION is a Bachmann model of 46521, one of the final examples of the class that was built in 1953. 46521 would sp spend its entire li life working under BR in Wales under the BR Western region before retirement in 1966. In 1969, it was purchased from the scrapyard for preservation and is currently owned by the Great Central Web Railway. Next model we are looking at is another LNER A1. Unlike the previous one we looked at, these were, much, these were built much later and would be the final iteration of the LNER specifics. Although they were designed to cope with the heaviest trains on the LNER, they would spend no time under LNER's ownership. The first example, locomotive number 60114, would be completed after nationalization in August 1948. All 49 locomotives would be assigned to the eastern region of BR and would run in both England and Scotland. The design was said to be very successful, but all steam locomotives in the UK were were living on borrowed time under BR. Starting in 1962 and ending in 1966, all of these locomotives were withdrawn and scrapped. Usually, when a class does not survive the scrapper's torch, its story is over. But in 1990, the A1 Steam Locomotive Trust was founded with the intention of building a 50th member of the class. 18 years after the company was founded, on August 1st, 2008, 60163, named Tornado, moved under her own power for the first time, marking the completion of the first new build of a steam locomotive this large. The, this model is produced by Bachman and represents the aforementioned replica. The delivery carried by this locomotive is, a, is a LNER green, with the LNER lettering and number replaced with BR markings. This is how the original locomotives would have looked when they were built when they were built in 1948 and 1949. The final model we will be looking at is the most modern steam locomotive I have in my collection. This is a BR Standard Class 3 tank engine. After nationalization of the railways in 1948, BR inherited a large collection of aging and poorly maintained steam locomotives that shared almost nothing in common with each other. BR quickly determined that new types of steam locomotives were needed to standardize their fleet across all of the network. To determine which locomotives these standards would be based on, BR organized exchange trials between the different regions of the network. 
the result was 999 BR standard locomotives built across 12 different classes. My only standard is this, a BR standard class 3 tank engine. These took the boiler from the Great Western's large prairie locomotives, and the chassis was derived from similar LMS designs. A similar 260 variant was also produced. Between 1952 and 1955, 45 of these tank engines were built and assigned to the Midland, Southern, Western, and Northeastern regions for branch line service. However, as BR began to modernize and get rid of their steam locomotives, even the brand new BR, BR standards could not escape the inevitable. Start, starting in 1964, withdrawals began, and the last one was removed from service in 1967. All original engines were scrapped, however, a new build is in progress at the Severn Valley, Severn Valley Railway and is expected to be completed in late 2023. This is a this model is a Bachman model of locomotive number 82020 as it, appear, as it appeared when it was built. So those are the eight locomotives I have brought to show today. I hope you enjoyed seeing some models of prototypes you probably haven't seen before and hopefully you learned something new. I'm Will Babcock with the Elkhart Model Railroad Club. Thank you for watching.